Yes, welcome into Sports Bit. Betty and Inside today, Paulie and Teddy, Tuesday, June 28th. Big game breakdown is going to be Hamels against CC and the deep dive, Cincinnati Bengals plus the play of the day. Historic upset right off the bat. Iceland, they make the quarters for the first time in history. They beat England. They were huge underdogs. They win 2-1. to one. How about this tweet from Don Van Atta Jr. from ESPN. England's manager is paid $4.6 million a year. The Iceland manager is a part-time dentist. you got to love it. <laughs> yeah, that's the beauty of sports, man. You can't make this stuff up. And this is why, even as jaded as we are, as long-time betters, Paulie, you're still fans. We still enjoy something like this. When you talk about the fact that Iceland, as a country, has fewer people than Aurora, Colorado. England has 159 times as many people as Iceland. 51 million to 323,000. And, of course... 8% of the Iceland population was at the game, Paulie. Yes. That's insane. Yes. Yeah. One thing, though. The ESPN, come on. The guy who was the analyst next to Bob Lee, to say that's bigger than Leicester City, you're a complete buffoon. You're going to compare 8-1 to one to 5,000-1? to one? This was one match. Leicester City did it for 38 matches a full season in the Premier League. Give me a break. And then ESPN goes back to the biggest upsets of all time. And they got the usual cast of characters, USA, Russia, which wasn't even that big of an upset. It was only 3-1 to one, and some of that other garbage, too. So that was the uh, asinine statement <laughs> to compare this to Leicester City. But in any event, you know, more of this about the money they spend and more disappointment for England and what Iceland was able to do, wow, and the population as well. How about what that parlay paid on the two games, Teddy? Oh, yeah, you're talking at 40 to 1 widely available numbers. If you shopped around, you could find as high as 45 to 1. We're not talking about a six teamer, an eight team, a two teamer. You know, getting paid 40 to 1 plus. Uh, but let me talk about this because you routinely see the mainstream media get betting stories wrong. Because they don't understand betting. And that's not, you know, no, again, you talk about USA, Russia. Yeah, it was a huge upset, but not in the betting markets, it wasn't. <laughs> you know, Tyson, Buster, Douglas, pretty big upset in the betting markets. You know, that, that has to be on, you know, those lists that you see every time someone pulls an upset. But to expect someone to understand the difference between 5,000 to 1 and 9 to 1 or 8 to 1 in the range that Iceland was in today, you know, they're a plus 850 or better was widely available. I saw them as high as plus 966. Uh, but to not, not understand the difference between 5,000 to 1 and 3 to 1 or 8 or 9 to 1, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty egregious if you ask me. But, you know, that's what you get from the mainstream media. That's why you watch Sportsbit, baby. Hodgson, the uh, English coach, he, uh, he split after the game. He said, this is it. He was probably gone anyways. But for British fans that want to believe that he choked, a picture is really worth a thousand words. <laughs> Check this one out. As England, you know, that's another thing too, Teddy, about the, if you watch this entire tournament, there wasn't a big difference between these two clubs. Plus, England had struggled against some bad teams. This yeah, is I what mean, they do. Uh, look, the, the dogs have been cashing uh, here inside. I mean, every big dog that we've talked about, with the exception of the Cavs, when they came back from 3-1 to one against Golden State. Uh, and even then, they were only in the plus 900 range. They weren't ridiculous underdogs to come back from something that no team had ever done in the NBA Finals. Uh, all the dogs were talking about are from soccer. You know, look at Italy. You know, they were as high as plus 370. Plus 350 uh, was widely available. Uh, they take care of business. But, ooh, tough push on the total for that one, Paulie, wasn't oh, it? Oh, yeah, that was, uh, yep. Italy scored in, in stoppage time with about yeah, added time. Yeah. Three, three minutes left to make it, uh, uh, yeah, to make it 2 nothing. Under betters a couple couple minutes uh, for cash in that one. That was a tough one. If, uh, well, at least you got the push, but you were looking to cash that ticket if you had the under. Uh, here's another. This was a bad bet. Thor in the Mets, he got lit up. <laughs> well, uh, I mean, we talked about it yesterday uh, on Sportsbit. You know, the issues with Syndergaard's elbow that we referenced. The Mets, minus 106 up to minus 120. You know, Syndergaard, this is now a, uh, from a little red flag. Now it's a big red flag. He last three innings. Ten of the 18 batters that he faced reach based. Seven hits, three walks. Also had five steals against him. Syndergaard has now allowed 28 steals this season, Polly. No other pitcher in baseball is higher than 14 steals around, so allowed. So he's essentially lapped the field. Uh, he's worse than John Lester. <laughs> uh, ben Revere, of course, a huge game for the Nats. Four hits and three stolen bases. Washington showing signs of breaking out of that nasty slump. Are we calling the Pirates a bad bet or a bad beat? 
I got to call him a bad, a little bit of both. Okay. You know, a bad beat. It's a tough beat. When you have a 4 nothing lead after one inning and you never score again, uh, in, in a game where you, I mean, a ton of money for Pittsburgh. They were bet up from plus 110 to minus 115 in that game. Uh, we got to call that a tough beat, especially because the winning run for L.A. came after a Pirates error sent a runner to third and then an infield single with two outs. The infield single by A.J. Ellis, the freaking catcher, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's a bad beat. Yeah. Cubs Reds money, they took a, they took a lot of over money, and it was spot on. Arietta got roughed up, gave up five runs, and this one flew over easy. Yeah, uh, I mean, so there was a lot of money uh, in yesterday's action that was really spot on in Major League Baseball. Uh, we talk about the Pirates money as not necessarily being spot on if they blew the four-run lead, but Cubs Reds over. I mean, there was a ton of over money in that game. Arietta's now nine walks and seven runs allowed his last two starts. That's his worst two-start numbers in both categories, dating back, obviously, to uh, last June. Worth noting, he was pulled after five innings again. That's five times in the last ten starts that he's been pulled after five. Joe Madden really concerned about managing Jake Arietta's innings. This is, again, we talk about red flags. Syndergaard's got one. Arietta for me, is not a pitcher I have any interest in putting my money on. You're still laying two fifty three dollars with the guy, and he's not the same hurler right now as he was even a month ago. They should skip his next start. As far as Chris Bryant, what a historic night. Five for five, three home runs, two doubles, six RBIs, one of the best offensive games in MLB history, and the Cubs have been around since 1900. That's a record. 16 total bases. <laughs> when you're breaking records that are more than a century old, you'd had a pretty good night. Uh, I'll say that much. What about Tampa? You know, the markets went nuts. Tampa entered the, 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 uh, the we got 0-11 slide. And, of course, what the markets do? They bet them up. Minus 115, or sorry, plus 115 to minus 110. And, of course, Tampa leads 9 nothing by the third inning. <laughs> Never in doubt, right side winner for a team that had lost 11 straight. What's up with the Red Sox right now, Paulie? They stink all of a sudden. 9-15 and 15 here in June. Well, their pitching's atrocious. They can't get anybody out. They almost got swept at home by the White Sox. They can't get anybody out. And what happened against the Rays? Need to make make, make a trade and get some arms. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the only games they're winning, the last of uh, the last seven wins, they've had to score six or more uh, six times during that span. Of course, after last night's loss, manager John Farrell held one of those team meetings. Oh, here we go. Right yeah. after the game. Uh, and, of course, the uh, starting pitcher, Eduardo Rodriguez, he got optioned back to trip AAA immediately after. They were in a foul mood after that ugly loss to Tampa. All right, big game breakdown up next. Rangers, Yankees, Marlins, Tigers, and a strong opinion on the Cincinnati Bengals. That's coming up on Sportsbit. Betting Insight today. Hey, everyone. Tune into today's MLB Odds Couple show, uh, Tuesday, June 28th. I called it yesterday in the advertisement for our show. I said my second half plays were looking really good. I was yes. liking the both of them cashed. And I'm telling you, this card, man, I'm going to have like 12 or 15 bets. I might get 12 or 15 picks in the show. Mike Renner, do you think they should tune in? I think they should because guess what? 12 out of them 15 will be winners. Pistol there you please. go. Tune into the show, guys. Back on Sportsman, as always, live on sportsbookreview.com. Rangers and the Yankees. Hamels against CC. Rangers $1.28 and a half. There's some eights out there. And the Rangers brought in Cole Hamels to be their ace of a playoff team. And he takes them out as the ace of a team with the best record in the American League. So they're on track. Texas lost the first two games that Hamels started going back to August. Since then, 21-4, plus 47 runs. And he goes up against a Yankees team that struggles against lefties. Yeah, and the Yankees aren't going to get a whole lot better against lefties this season. Uh, when you look at the numbers right here, the bottom five in baseball against opposing southpaws. The Braves, the Phillies at the bottom, the Dodgers, the Mets have both struggled, and there are the Yankees at number 26. So uh, I think this is legitimately going to be a problem for New York moving forward, Paul. But when we talk about problems, you know, let's talk about CC Sabathia. Are we talking about a guy with a resurrection? Well, I don't know that I would just count on it just yet. Not uh, when you look at the good, you know, there's just win-loss, 2.71 ERA, uh, five wins on the season, more wins than losses. Then you look at the bad all of the advanced metric numbers, the X5, the Sierra, say that CC Sabathia has been more lucky than good so far this season, Paulie. So what's going on with the guy? Well, he was supposed to bounce back because he was sober. Remember, this guy, all that money they gave him, and he had the alcohol issues. Not to mention, he had issues with his diet. I think he was eating Captain Crunch every day, eating all that cereal he blew up. This has been a major disappointment for the Yankees. I don't know, maybe they're, they're supposed to be better with uh, – 
off the booze. What do you think? Well, I mean, they, 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 this is the truth of it, okay? He does have a 2.71 ERA, which he hasn't had in years. You know, he did win a World Series title with the Yankees, which is something that you have to give him credit for. And, you know, even though the drinking, you know, or the lack of drinking, you know, you looked at that great start that he had earlier in the season, you say maybe this is something real. You know, maybe the fact that CeCe's not drinking anymore, all of a sudden he's back to, you know, 27-year-old CeCe. Well, then you start to look at the hard numbers. You know, his walk rate is at a career high right now, uh, 3.8 per nine innings. But the difference this season, he just isn't giving up home runs. You know, you look at the home run from fly, per fly ball rate in all of baseball, he's ahead of Johnny Cueto, he's ahead of Jake Arrieta and Quintana and, uh, you know, the, all the best pitchers, he's ahead of all of them, you know. So it's a situation where CC Sabathia has kind of been lucky in that regard, far more lucky than good. And then, of course, you wonder if it can hold up. Sabathia, his ground ball rate, career normal. You know, each of the last five years, it's been right around the same number. But that home run per fly ball rate, you know, as high as 23.3 back in 2014. This year, it's 4.2. There's no real change in the ratio of fly balls. They just haven't left the park yet, Paul. And there's absolutely no reason for that to hold up long term. Yeah, a lot of good numbers there. Game number two, live on sportsbookreview.com. The Marlins and the Tigers. It's Conley against Pelfrey, dollar five, nine and a half the total. The Marlins wake up this morning in second place after 76 games. And Stanton has struggled. How, how, how seriously are we supposed to take these guys? I think we got to take the Marlins very seriously right now. Uh, I mean, look, they have a winning record, as you mentioned, despite the fact that Giancarlo Stanton is hitting 220 with 91 strikeouts versus 51 hits. Stanton gets going. It's a very different story for uh, the Marlins offensively. Now, Christian Yelich has been an unbelievable uh, guy for them this year, obviously hitting 311, uh, 399 uh, on base percentage, 474 slugging. He's really picked up the slack, and – uh, frankly, you can call Adam Conley, uh, the starter tonight, the Yelich of pitchers. A guy that doesn't bring a whole lot of market appeal. Nobody pays any attention to him unless you're in Miami. But he's quietly getting the job done. Look at these numbers now. With basically a full season as a starter. Innings pitched, 150 innings. 8-5, and 3.65 ERA, and a FIP of 3.78. Not great individual categories, but not bad ones either. Similar to the Marlins as a team, although the defense is up to number 6. At fan graph. So at 500, is it difficult to decide whether the Tigers are a contender or a pretender, Ted? Yeah, uh, until you notice that they keep tossing the ball to Mike Pelfrey every fifth day uh, as part of their starting rotation. And look, you know, we talked about Detroit last week a couple of times. I got that great quote from the Tigers. Uh, I don't remember who it was from, but it was a quote saying, look, man, this clubhouse, we got some, we, we, we're we really feeling it. The chemistry in here is great. And then, of course, they got swept over the weekend at home, and now they're handing the ball to Mike Pelfrey, you know, who's just been awful, 1-7 and seven with a 4.91 ERA. The advanced metrics are even worse. You know, his, his, his FIP is 5.34, Sierra's 5.24, and look at this graph, all right? If you're really a World Series contender, how can this guy be in your starting rotation? Look at how bad Mike Pelfrey has been, not just this year, not just last year. Since 2011, he's 19-47. and 47. Yeah, uh, and it could be worse this year. He's already given up nine unearned runs in 80 innings of work. And, uh, you know, he's, he's, I guess, eating up some innings, you know, maybe. But when you give up too much contact, he's only got four and a half strikeouts per nine innings. It puts a lot of pressure on the defense behind you, which equates to unearned runs. Those numbers are atrocious. There's nobody in the in the minor league system they could call up. There's anybody. A lot of guys can do better than that that are down there. I mean, come on. That's what they're doing right now. They're going with Mike Pelfrey Ridiculous. every fifth day. All right. Up next, AFC North continues. Cincinnati Bengals. And they blew it. They should have uh, fired Marvin Lewis. They'll bring him back. We'll get to the Bengals coming up. And the play of the day on Sports Bit. Betty and Insight today. Always on the go. Bet365 has one of the top mobile platforms in today's market. Sign up today, and don't let your busy life keep you out of the game. Here we go. Cincinnati Bengals over under 9.5 wins last year. 12-4 and four straight up, 12-3-1 and one ATS, 9-7 and seven of the under. Strong money winners all year in every role. 100% ATS in games when they weren't favored. Pick or underdog, Teddy? Yeah, uh, the mainstream stats look okay. Number 15 in total offense, number 11 in total defense. They did outgain their opponents by 0.4 yards per play. That ranked number 10 uh, in the NFL. And they were number three in the NFL in turnover differential at plus 11. That was certainly a big factor 
in their success a season ago. But we start with Cincy. I know you were already complaining about Marvin Lewis in the uh, in the uh, promo uh, for this segment. You know, I mean, Marvin Lewis has been there a long time. It yeah. was his 14th season in Cincinnati, and obviously still looking for his first playoff win with the same team. And we think about coaches that have been in the same place for a long time. Sometimes they get a little bit burnt out, particularly when they're not competing for championships every year. Andy Reid wasn't the same coach in Philly the last year or two uh, that he's been since getting that fresh start in KC. But when you look at the record under Marvin Lewis, Paul, you can't complain about the guy. You really can't. Look at this chart right here for Marvin Lewis. And this chart, yes, includes not one, not two, not three, not four, five straight years that since he has cashed winning bets for anyone that took them over their season win total. Well, whoop de damn do. I can't complain about the record. I'll complain about the playoff record. 0-7. That's embarrassing. Also, he's been outcoached. Not only is he 0-7, the Bengals have never scored over 17 points in any of the games. How can that happen? 2005, they lost it home to the Steelers, 31-17. to Stop. Oh, 2005, Carson Palmer blew his leg out in the first quarter of that game. Who cares? Game. Not Marvin a, Lewis's hold on, fault. there's a theme here. Not big Marvin big, Lewis's injuries fault. Injuries are part of, all right, big deal. So I got Andy Dalton out. I should have won the game with McCarron. More on that coming up. 2009, they lost to the Jets at home, 24-14. That was Mark Sanchez that beat them. 2011, lost to Houston, 31-10. 2012, lost to Houston again, 19-13. Lost at home to the Chargers, 27-10. Lost at Indy 26 to 10, and last year without Andy Dalton and McCarron played uh, did a decent job. They should have won that game. They lost 18 to 16, and then Pac-Man Jones got the ridiculous uh, penalty, and Perfect got the PI as well, or the uh, necessary roughness. So stop. So Perfect and and Pac-Man Jones make bonehead plays on on the last drive, and you blame Marvin Lewis? I blame Marvin Lewis and Andy Dalton. It's a combo I don't want. And I don't want to. Well, how can you bring back a coach that's 0 and 7? That's Jim Warren. How Warwick can you not territory. bring back a coach that got you to 12 wins last year for a franchise that has been miserable and a coach that has cashed over tickets each of the last five years and six of the last seven? How, right, can, you how can you not can bring a coach like that? I mean, back? it's like Marty Schottenheimer territory. You can't win a big game. This guy can't win a big And you bring Schottenheimer game. back. Huh? How long did the Chiefs bring Schottenheimer back? Forever. Because they were supposed to, because they were winning. If you can fire a coach. After a 14-2 and two regular season, because you couldn't do anything in the playoffs, the Bengals should have fired Marvin Lewis a long time ago. The now, Bengals are a very different organization than most others. Let's well, yeah, that. they're loyal to a fault, and that, that's on them. And, and now they off-season moves. They lost Sanu. They lost Jones. Both of them were paid uh, as number one wide receivers. It's A.J. Green and Tyler Eifert. And I don't know, what, Boyd, the second rounder? Maybe Brandon LaFell, who was uh, average with the Patriots. Could be a good slot guy. Now to your guy, Dalton. <laughs> My guy. Look, Dalton had a QB rating of 106.3 last year. That was number two in the NFL behind Russell Wilson. You know, in his first four seasons, his high was 88.8. He threw 16, 20, and 17 interceptions the previous three years. Last year, he threw only seven in 13 games. Now he's got a broken thumb that's healed. But he has a new offensive coordinator. He has a new group of receivers. And when you put those two factors together... Do we expect a downgrade, or is Dalton his prime going to be a 100-plus QB rating guy every year moving forward? I guess we'll find out, 2016. Yeah, my answer in two minutes. Uh, you want to, I'll, let me? You can do the old line. I want to take the coaches. So they lost Mike Zimmer to the Vikings two years ago, defensive coordinator. Now they lose offensive coordinator Hugh Jackson. He takes over with the Browns. Their new OC is Ken Zampezi. That's uh, Ernie's son. He's been the QB coach there since Lewis arrived, so no big deal there. And they finished number two in the NFL in points allowed last year and you know I don't know I don't know if this guy's the next uh, Zimmer but uh, they're high in their defensive coordinator yeah I mean you, you say all right you lose your coordinator and that is a lot of coaching talent you know Zimmer is a guy who I have a ton of respect for and look what he's done in Minnesota already but you know maybe Gunther's the next Mike Zimmer the defense finished number two in the NFL in points allowed last year you talk about Zampezi you know he comes from a coaching family yeah they lose Hugh Jackson and Hugh Jackson's a big loss uh, as an offensive mind, really create a play caller. Someone I have a lot of respect for, but at least there's continuity there because zampezi has been the QB coach here since Lewis arrived. So I don't know if he's going to be a great play caller necessarily, but in terms of continuity, they don't lose a whole lot. Uh, you talk about the offensive line, that offensive line is pretty good. The front seven on defense is really good and deep too. You know, they can withstand Burfick's four game suspension to open the season. You know, Geno Atkins, an absolute monster. Uh, for that team in the middle. It's a pretty darn good-looking secondary, too. It is a solid defense 
for sure, Paul. Whether it's spectacular, there are a lot of veterans on this, D. And last year, it looked from an eye test to me, it looked like some of these guys lost a step. But uh, on paper, you know, the defense still has a heck of a lot of talent. All right, and that leads us to money time. Play of the day. I like this a lot. Bengals under nine and a half wins plus a dollar fifteen. Hugh Jackson's gone. Marvin Lewis is losing guys around him. Dalton loses. They lose Jones and Sanu, and there's no way Dalton can repeat his performance off last year. Bengals under nine and a half. Cleveland. And let me jump in real yep. quick, Paul, because there's one the one more thing that we have to talk about schedule wise with Cincinnati because you know their schedule wise last year league average, this year league average again, but. Since he loses a home game to face the Redskins in London. So they only get seven games at home. That being said, their entire season, with the exception of that London trip, is played in the Eastern and Central time zone. They don't have any West Coast trips, but only seven games at home, which certainly makes sense with your under recommendation. Yes. Cleveland Browns tomorrow. We'll check it. We'll see you tomorrow. We'll do a big game breakdown. And Phil Steele going to make an appearance uh, on the show this week as well, Mr. College Football, on Sports Betting insight today on SBRPicks.com.